Evidence-Based Practice, EBP. Are you a nurse or even a student? And are you searching for ways of improving patient outcomes and making an impact in your profession? Evidence-Based Practice, EBP, is the way to go and focuses on patient care. This article will inform you on how to go about and gather skills for your profession. We will define EBP for you, the steps involved, the types of questions to ask, the quality of evidence, and address some frequently asked questions. Feel free to ask, seek clarifications on this subject, or place an order for any nursing help. Evidence-based practice definition. Evidence-based practice is a decision-making and problem-solving technique that various professionals apply in their line of duty. Some fields that use this technique are psychology, education, the healthcare industry, social work or community projects, etc. In healthcare, the approach applies the facts available from the current research of clinical studies, clinical expertise, and patient values. This strategy was evident during the COVID-19 era when physicians could rely on the research being done by the WHO and the patient's preference to give treatment. Let's define these three components of the EBP, current, relevant, and reliable studies can help you make decisions or solve various issues. This research can include meta-analyses, systemic reviews, observational studies, and random controlled trials. Clinical expertise is the expertise skills that you gain from studies, training, and practice and helps in the EBP. Your experience helps you to analyze the research and apply it to your situation or the client's context, patient or client preferences and values refers to the collaboration between professionals and the patients that help in decision making. The patients share their preferences that guide healthcare providers in delivering the best care. What are the benefits of EBP in nursing? EBP guidelines benefit nurses and clinicians in making the correct decisions for patient care. These benefits of evidence-based practice in nursing include, one, improves patients' outcome, applying the best evidence to nursing interventions, clinical skills, and a combination of patients' preferences and values lead to better results. This evidence guides healthcare providers' practice, ensuring patient safety, fewer treatment complications, and better health results. 2. Enhances patient satisfaction. The EBP method is patient-centered, and the clients can share their treatment preferences and any other unique issues or situation. This client engagement in the decisions making improves patient satisfaction and involvement in their healthcare. 3. Improves professional competence. This research approach challenges nurses to think critically, analyze the studies, and integrate them into practice. Again, when healthcare providers are informed on the latest research in their niche, it enhances their knowledge and overall performance in healthcare settings. EBP empowers nurses to critically appraise and integrate research evidence into their practice. Continuous research and learning lead to professional growth and expertise. 4. Efficient resource utilization. Applying evidence-based practice in nursing interventions that have been proven leads to better resource utilization. Since you rely on tested and proven interventions, you don't have to do unnecessary procedures, thus reducing healthcare costs. 5. Collaboration and interdisciplinary practice. EBP promotes collaboration in the healthcare setting. Professionals integrate the relevant research and their clinical expertise and still engage clients. The interdisciplinary technique promotes teamwork, communication, and commitment to improved patient care. 6. Professional accountability. Using the evidence method in nursing ensures that they practice what's right based on evidence. This method helps the nurses to be accountable for their actions in the healthcare facilities. Again, the professionals always ensure they deliver quality care. Which are the steps of EBP? The steps used in the EBP involve a systematic and structured approach to applying research in clinical problem solving. The general steps for the EBP include the following. Ask a clinical question form and pause an answerable clinical question. 
The question should be detailed to have the best answer and follow the PICO format. PICO means population, patient or problems, intervention or exposure, comparison, and outcome. Speaking of questions, do you know you can come to us for questions and answers help? Search for the best evidence, use the relevant databases to gather evidence for your answer. You can use medical journals and apply filters to refine your search. Appraise the evidence, analyze the evidence you have gathered to determine its reliability, validity, and applicability to the clinical question. You appraise this evidence by assessing its methodology, relevance, and study design. You can use various appraisal tools to analyze the evidence, such as the Critical Appraisal Skills Program Checklist and the Newcastle Ottawa Scale. Integrate the evidence. It's a step where you combine the evidence from your research, your expertise, and the patient's preferences and values. The evidence should align with your clinical scenario and the client's needs. Implement the evidence after gathering all the knowledge and applying your skills. You should decide on a specific intervention. Your decision should involve choosing a particular treatment or diagnostic procedure. Evaluate outcomes. It's a monitoring and documenting stage of the outcomes of the EBP approach. You should focus on the patient's health outcome, satisfaction, and other relevant factors. It's a moment to assess the effectiveness of the EBP integration. Share and disseminate after gathering knowledge, applying it, and getting results, you should share it with the healthcare community. You can do presentations, group discussions, or even publications. Sharing will help in empowering others and improvement of work performance. Do you need an evidence-based practice essay for your course assignment? Reach out for our writing services. We can also help you prepare for your presentations, publications, and other research forms. Or consider reading this blog on how to write a medical college research paper. Which are the types of EBP questions? There are specific types of questions that you should formulate to search for the best evidence. These questions have various categories depending on the kind of information that you are seeking, therapy intervention questions, these questions seek clarification on the treatment effectiveness, therapy, or intervention. The purpose of asking this question is to ensure you achieve the best when managing a condition. For instance, you may want to know whether treatment A or B will cause allergic reactions to diagnosis questions. It's a question that will help you identify the best and most efficient diagnostic test for a specific condition. The level of accuracy will determine the test's sensitivity and predictive values. You can easily compare tests B and C to determine which will deliver the most accurate results. Prognosis questions. Prognosis refers to the prediction of the outcomes of a condition. So, you ask a question to learn the result for a specific condition or the forecasted future. These questions help you to learn the path of patient management and assist you in making the right interventions. Etiology, harm questions. Etiology means the origin and cause of the disease. An etiology question should focus on the causes or risk factors related to the condition or the effects of an intervention. Prevention or screening questions. These questions you pose to learn the effective prevention measures for a specific condition. Evidence-based practice projects. We have a list of the best evidence-based practice topics in nursing that you can consider for your research. You can do pediatric, psychology, adult, critical care, and pain management, pediatric EBP nursing topics. Why should nurses know about the confront theory, the impact of social media on eating habits in children, which are the efficient newborn resuscitating practices? What are the causes and emerging treatments for ADHD in children? the management and prevention of childhood obesity. What are the effects of parental education on pediatric emergency department visits, the unique requirements of young patients, such as growth spurts and family-centered care. Nursing care to kids with congenital heart defects, child sleep disorders treatment based on current scientific research, 
the challenges and possibilities of offering at-home care of children with complex medical needs, pain management EBP topics, the use of massage therapy to manage pain in hospitalized patients, the use of hypnotherapy to deal with pain in hospitalized patients, how to use mind-body interventions to manage chronic pain for patients with fibromyalgia, practices of pain, management in the pediatric department, the pain management for cancer survivors, which are the best medicated and non-medicated post-surgery pain management, what is the effectiveness of music therapy in reducing pain and anxiety in pediatric patients, pitfalls of using opioids and benzodiazepines, innovations in interventional pain management of chronic spine pain, best practices for handling postpartum pain, adult EBP nursing projects, the effects of aging on the immune system, how to improve oral care for older people, what are the diet risks for dementia, falls and injury risks for adults, prevention and management, what are the dangers associated with living sedentary, reasons why obesity cases are rising in men above 35 years, sleep, apnea and narcolepsy treatment, mental health and psychiatric care in adults, nurses' roles in dealing with problems and complaints of adult patients, how to care for diabetic patients, midwifery EBP nursing topics, which are the risk factors for postnatal depression, the effects of prenatal yoga on women and the infants, which are the causes of stress and prevalence in midwives, risks and long-term effects of caesarean section, causes of premature and low birth weights in infants, the ways and strategies of engaging fathers. In perinatal services, advanced maternal age risk factors, Effectiveness of mineral and vitamin supplements during pregnancy, management of hernia rupture, role of infections in miscarriages. Critical care EBP nursing projects, how to make nursing decisions in critical care, critical care stress and its management, how to handle patient safety, balancing the risks and benefits of pancreatic cancer surgery for older patients, what are the indications for intubation in the critically ill person, how should acute asthma be managed in the intensive care unit? Open leadership in the intensive care unit. Medical imaging during the intensive care unit. Prevention, identification, and treatment of sepsis in the intensive care unit. Preventing and assessing intensive care delirium. Which are the levels of EBP? Different ways are used to test the quality and relevance of the research studies. These levels will help the medical professional identify and use the relevant evidence in their clinical practice. The following are the levels of EBP from the highest to the lowest. 1. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses. These comprehensive studies summarize and analyze the results of multiple primary research studies on a specific topic. They provide the highest level of evidence as they integrate and critically appraise a large body of research. Meta-analyzers combine data from individual studies to obtain a pooled effect size. 2. Randomized controlled trials, RCTs. RCTs are the most reliable level of evidence and belong to level A. This evidence involves allocating participants into different groups, like intervention and control, to evaluate their efficacy. This level will offer strong evidence for cause and effect relationship if it has a proper design. 3. Cohort studies. This evidence that belongs to level B examines a group of people over time and assesses their exposure to a specific intervention. The follow-up can be prospective, monitoring the progress with time, or retrospective, assessing changes with historical data. This level gives valuable evidence but the results may be subject to biases. 4. Case control studies. A case study compares an individual with a particular outcome to others without the outcome controls. It also examines the individual's previous exposure to potential risk. This research is valuable when dealing with rare conditions though it's more prone to bias. If you are working on a case study, don't struggle alone. Seek our case study writing help and save time for your studies. 5. Cross-sectional studies. This research deals with data collected in a particular area to examine the relationship between its variables. This evidence highlights a population's prevalence, distribution of factors, 
or outcomes. Unfortunately, the method fails to establish cause and effect relationships. 6. Expert opinions and editorials, its evidence is acquired from the expert's opinions, commentaries or recommendations, and consensus viewpoints. They provide insights and hypotheses, but should always be interpreted and applied cautiously. These are the six levels of evidence based on its effectiveness and quality. You should always decide which to use depending on the scenario. Sometimes it is best to go the extra mile and discuss with colleagues or experts from another department.